What if I told you that you could make your own Skylanders game in Unity? And what if you could use multiple portals at the same time and be able to 3D print and use your own figures that you create? And what if it only took one script? One very important script, but only one. And you could have multiple portals running at the same time, reading, writing, sending commands, making your own toys work instantaneously at very high performance levels. No DLL files, nothing that you need to download from some sketchy website, just one script and Unity's input system. And maybe some of your slimy USB ports. Let's just do it, it, it works, it's crazy. To get started, we're gonna have to go all the way back to November of 2022 when I started this project. And that's when I discovered Crap! In one of my previous videos, I actually said his name very wrong. Instead of Michael, it's actually... Marijn Knippers. In preparation for the video, Marijn I tried to say Knippers. his name over and over and over and over again, Marijn but I just Knippers. couldn't get it down in a way that I felt comfortable with. So I'm just gonna show his username literally every single time I need to reference him. He's awesome. This video is not gonna use a lot of that code anymore. We're gonna start from scratch but he's still a big resource and the Skylanders community as a whole is a huge resource and you should go check them all out. But anyway, what he discovered is that each of these commands in the portal all mean different things, obviously. And he was able to map what letters and what bytes mean what things. And I was able to use that to create a very basic portal controller in Unity. And that project was super awesome. It took me forever but it really felt rewarding in the end. And seeing a bunch of people kind of tell me how I was wrong was really nice. And being able to kind of take part in that was awesome. But in this version of the project, I'm not trying to actually make a game. I wanna be able to have multiple portals hooked up at the same time. I wanna build up the tooling so that way it's just a drag and drop script into any Unity project. And that way anyone can make a Skylanders game. And for me personally, I want to use it to make something that's not even Skylanders related. But in order to do that, we need to have all of this stuff set up and working in advance. So with the recap out of the way and our previous sources, we can now start to build a new Unity project. And the first thing that I'm going to do is import the Unity input system. This is required because this is the system that's going to handle our disconnections, connections, multiple portals, and even our input and output. So this is how a computer would normally see an input device. A device spews out packets and we as a programmer have to deal with this mess. However, if we use the Unity's input system, we basically put a layer in between these two. The layer will interpret those packages and then give Unity a smaller, more bite-sized version that we can handle and understand at a more of a high level. Now that we know this, we can create our own input device in Unity. When we do this, we can actually follow Unity's documentation and set up our device with a VID and a PID, which defines what a portal is, and we can also define the input bytes. Now, what are the input bytes for the portal? Well, for now, let's look at the PS5 controller again, and we can see that the bytes in order are the joysticks, and then some buttons, and the D-pad, and all of that can be controlled just through the input bytes. And we don't even have to do anything, we just have to read them and figure out which one's which in what order. Back in Unity, we can now define the bytes from the portal from our previous projects, and we've officially moved the device from the unsupported tab to the supported device tab. And if we double click it, we now get a ton of new information that we just didn't have before. We now know exactly what bits are input and output, and we also get to see the live readout of what our portal is doing, which is actually very convenient. And already, we are not getting any performance drawback by just reading from the portal. This is great news. And that tells me that our only real performance concern is going to be writing to the portal. Speaking of which, we now need to be able to write our own portal command structure. Once we do this, we can apply it to every other portal command that we know. But if we can't get the portal to even read a command from us, it's not gonna mean anything if we know how to do it because we just can't send a command. So what we'll do is we'll have a new structure and inside of this will be the 33 bytes that we want as our output. This can hold our color and our other data, and maybe it's how we want to write to a figure or any of that. 
The important part here is that Unity requires you to tell you how long the output is going to be. And for us, that's gonna be the base command plus 33 bytes, because that's how much the portal wants to read. Once we have that all set up, all we need to do is call the execute command from any other script we want. So yes, technically you have to use other scripts to be able to make the portal run and do things, but the portal controller itself is all handled in one script and all you need to do is build a game around it and then call the functions you wanna call. So I threw together this Unity project real quick where if you plug in a portal, it will quickly give you a color selector and you get to tell it what portal color to be. And as you can see, we now have multiple portals doing different colors and we can tell them to do multiple commands constantly, meaning that we are sending commands to two portals in every update every frame and we are not dropping performance. This is a huge change from last time where we had to deal with huge frame rate drops every time we wanted to read or write to the portal. And now we're just sending commands willy nilly, however we like and not getting any problems. So what's next? We've officially created our own Skylanders portal script that can now just basically do all the things we did before, reading, writing, and everything we need. Well, let's think about how we can create our own toys so that way we can actually create any type of game, not just any Skylanders game, but actually be able to manufacture and put our own RFC tags on one thing. I was able to find some 3D models online for free and I printed out a player model and a chest. When we do this, we can effectively put our own tags on the bottom. We don't need to use the originals, and you can find them on Amazon for very cheap. With that in mind, that basically means that we can kind of just do whatever we want with the tag. So we can turn, let's say, a D&D character sheet into our own data format. And if we can throw that on an NFC tag, we effectively can make our own Toys to Life D&D game. We can do the same thing with a weapon or a bag of holding or anything really just like how Skylanders has vehicles or traps, and we can apply that to our own games. And basically what I wanna do for the rest of this video is build our own toys and be able to decode them. And then at the end, this project will have not just the example of the color picker, but also how to write to a toy and how to read from a toy. And that way you basically have all of the tools to make your own game. So let's use this character sheet as an example. We know it has things like a name and levels, but it also has other things like classes and they're kind of abstract. How are we gonna be able to organize this? And if you don't know what D&D is, that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna just make it very simple in this instance. Basically, you can have these things called classes. Think of them like jobs. They give you your abilities and your smarts and your abilities. And, and yeah, basically that's it. It's really just your abilities and what you can do and why you can do them. But if you do know what D&D is, then you know that all of this stuff is dictated by the player handbook. And this basically tells you what everything is. But we don't really need to store that on the figure. All we need to store is, you know, what level the character is, not that they have fireball. We can assume that they have XYZ if we can know that ABC comes from that. So we only really need to know their name, what class they are, how many levels they have, how much money they have, maybe some things about their inventory. And we can also figure out how to tell them, you know, how many spells you have or what kind of spells you know. But sometimes saving things to a figure can be hard. For example, D&D has virtually infinite spells. If you include homebrew, it really is infinite. So how can we make sure that our player tags, which are limited to 1000 bytes, can dictate all of those spells. Well, let's say your video game has 500 spells. You don't need to store a spell in one byte. You could actually go inside of a byte and use a bit. A zero means you don't have a spell and a one means you have the spell. So instead of needing, you know, 500 bytes, you only need 500 bits, dividing your storage needs by eight. That is huge. And being able to apply that to other ideas can actually make your storage savings even greater. So now we can basically convert this entire character sheet into one kilobyte of space. Are we cutting things out and assuming things? Of course. This doesn't assume that you can multi-class or that you can do weird different abilities that are outside of the scope of this project. But that's where you come in. You are making your game so you can figure out what you want on your object. 
in Unity, this basically equates to having a scene that lets you create a toy, and then in your game, you just need to have a script that lets you read from the toy, and then when you're ready, you can write back to it to save any data. For example, let's say you level up. You can write to the toy one more level, or you can write to the toy how much money you earned. But really, you just gotta read the toy probably once a session, or every time you put it on the portal. You don't really need to do anything too crazy. And of course, Skylanders has a much better security protocol, making sure you don't corrupt data and all of that. We don't have that. You would implement something a little bit more safe, but I don't care about my player's data, and I'm probably gonna make copies of them every single time we play. But for you, you would probably go for a whole lot more of a complex solution. But in reality, this whole project's awesome. You can give each player that you have a portal, and now you can play D&D &D Skylanders with a TV table, which is actually something I really wanna do. That sounds really fun, actually. But think of the possibilities here. You can make almost any game toys to life. You can make Smash Brothers toys to life. I know they have amiibo, but like think about having a custom character that you get to bring everywhere that just has all of your stuff. You don't need to have a save file. So that brings it all together, I guess. I have everything on my GitHub and you can go download it right now and import it to your project. The only problem is, when I was recording the ending to this video, I wanted to show having like eight portals connected at the same time, showing off all the different portals and all the different commands all at the same time. And that is when disaster struck. I went ahead and started hooking up using USB extenders about five to six portals. And when I was doing this, nothing seemed to be going wrong. And actually my computer was reading all of their bytes. I was getting status commands all the way down the list. All five portals were working. However, as you're about to see, moment of truth time. Whew. Okay. Oh, that's not good. Um, okay. Let's pretend you don't exist for a second. You, you aren't doing it. Why? So you, yep, okay. You, yep, cool. So let's make you, let's make you green. We'll make you orange, whatever, yeah. Nothing. Okay, that could be the other portal. And nothing. So these two aren't working. What the heck? I immediately started to investigate what could have happened. And it turned out that the two swap force portals completely work. I can read and write to them fully, have color commands, multiple at the same time, everything I want. However, as I found out a couple minutes later, all of my other portals, while they can be read from, I can't write commands to them. They just don't take it. And while my computer will confirm that yes, the command is sent, and yes, the portal accepts it, the portal just doesn't do anything. It just doesn't. And I don't know actually what's wrong. And it's very confusing to me. And I wanna get it fixed as fast as possible. But I spent longer than I should have on this project already. And I need to get ready for a game jam in two days. Basically, I'm left at a loss actually. And I haven't been stumped like this in a long time where it's not even my code that's wrong. It's just something is different. Basically, this is a cry for help. I need your help. If you know anything about Unity, the HID protocol, the input system, Skylanders portals, anything, if you could try and help me, that'd be amazing. If you don't, can't, that's perfectly fine. Just, you know, like, comment, and subscribe and see what happens in three or four weeks. But. I have no clue, and I'm gonna bang my head against this until I get it to work, but I have no idea why this isn't working. I hate to leave it on such a sad note. It does work. I can read, I can write, I can make my own toys, but I just can't get these other portals to work, and I don't have the time to fix it, and I feel terrible, but I just wanted to give you this update of how far I've gotten, because multiple portals at the same time and having all of this happen, I've never done that before. I've never seen it work. I'm just so happy and I can't wait to see what I can do next with this stuff. But until next time, go have fun, go break some stuff, and I'll, I'll, I'll see you then.